Geekies. I'm Tessa Smith with MamasGeeky.com. And thank you guys so much for taking the time today. Super appreciate it. Um, now, this movie is obviously a lot about dealing with that inner voice that I think we all have. Um, Angela, I would love to know if you have any advice um, on dealing with your inner voice that's not so nice. Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is that to know that it doesn't matter how old you are, you still have it, you know? that's a, it's a lifelong journey, right? And, and there's days where you feel like I got this. And there's days where you're like, I can't, I can't do it. I I can't do it. And just to know that there'll always be that next day, right? That you're going to get to the other side of it, that you're going to be okay. And none of it is as big as what is in your head, right? The reality of it is always much smaller. And to just, I think the one thing that comes with age is knowing that you get to the other side, that you do get through it. And so I love that message in this movie, in particular, when Helene, you know, is like, pull over, Richie. And they have a moment where they just talk it out with her. Next, we're going to go to Robin Davis from Mom the Magnificent. Hi ladies, this is such a beautiful film and I really loved it. It gave me major um, flashbacks to my own high school experience. So I'd love to hear from both of you. If you could give one piece of advice to your teen self, what would that be? Wow, um, I would tell my 14 year old self that someday you'll get to direct a movie <laughs> for Netflix and your favorite genre. I think the 14 year old self need to hear that. Cause I think like where I am today seemed like such an impossible dream when I was 14, because at the time it's like, how many Asian American female directors do you see directing movies? And my parents thought I was crazy. Like, do you see anyone that looks like you that does this? Like you need to go and like majoring in accounting because you will never make it in this industry so just the fact that where we are now that like an asian american female director just won the oscar last year for best director um i think my 14 year old self needed to hear that and know that this dream is not so crazy it's not so impossible that someday that hollywood will want to hear our stories and see people that look like us behind cameras that's so great. I, I think I would tell my 14 year old self, um, you're done growing. You're not going to get any taller. <laughs> this is it for you. Um, be okay with it. There's high heels. There's other things. Um, but in all seriousness, um, one of the things my mom told my, me, I have three sisters. So we had this house full of women and she would constantly say to us, I mean, constantly still to this day, she is 83 and she still says it. She says, why not you? Why not you? You know, yeah. um, and you're the person that puts limits on yourself. So stop. And um, I, I recently, you know, started a whole new job uh, podcasting and I've never done that. And I was nervous. And my mom was like, why not you? Again, like she said it my whole life and it just rings true. You know, why not? Why not me? I can do it. Next up, we have Renisha Springer from Queen Thrifty. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining us, ladies. My name is Renisha Springer from Queen Thrifty. I was just curious what inspired the second season? What inspired to move forward with the second season? Thinking back um, on season one, where there was a focus of confidence, you know, and kind of self-acceptance. How do we lead into season two, you know, with kind of like that spin now that she's kind of got that confidence and she's got that guy. Angela, do you want to go or do you want me to go? I um, mean, I mean, you know, I can only speak as a as an actor, you know, like I, I can't really speak as for the writer um, of of the movie, but I think just for myself as an actor, I loved getting to know Jody and her family in the first one and just sort of, you know, that whole message that you said about, you know, self-acceptance and being okay with who you are, being comfortable in your own skin and, and seeing now where her character goes with that. And, and then, you know, there's, there's a thing that happens in life. Sometimes you get the thing that you wanted 
you know, that you hoped for. And then it's not what you thought, or you don't know how to then receive it. You don't know how to navigate it and it can be overwhelming. And so I loved that part of Jody's journey as well. Next up, we're gonna to go to Cami Allen from The Mummy Diaries. Hi, Angela. Hi, Emily. I'm Cami with TheMamaDiaries.com. First of all, Angela, I'm four ton. So I <laughs> feel you on all that, right? My brother's six yeah. three, go figure. Wow. Um, <laughs> I know, right? So um, Angela, my 12 year old son is super jealous because The Office is his favorite show ever right now. So when I told him that he was just, blown away. <laughs> I know. So Emily, I would like to know from you, actually, what made you want to be part of Tall Girl 2? Oh, yeah, that's such a great question, because um, I love the first movie, by the way, but I had nothing to do with the first movie. And when my agent sent me the script, you know, honestly, I was a little confused because I'm like, oh, but they wrapped up the movie so perfectly in the first one, there's going to be a sequel and they want to consider me. I was so flattered because um, up until this point, I've only ever been sent scripts with like Asian elements. So I'm like, oh, they're thinking outside the box. That's so great. And when I read the script, I immediately fell in love with it because, you know, I felt like, you know, as much as I adored the first film, I felt like not everyone can necessarily relate to being tall. But I thought the second film was so much more universal and emotionally resonant because everyone could relate to having that negative inner voice. And it's something that everyone has gone through. People don't really love to talk about it or admit that they're you know, scared to go into a new environment or they have that imposter syndrome, but we all deal with it. So just thematically, I was you know, blown away. And I could really relate to Jody's journey in this one. Um, but I was a little scared going into a sequel of an established franchise. I was really afraid that, you know, the cast was going to treat me like a stepmom and be like, you're not our mom. You're, but like no one did. And everyone was so nice and welcoming to the tall girl family. Um, so yeah, it was just a really great experience all around. Next, we're going to go to Jana Seitzer from Whiskey and Sunshine. So this is a question for um, both Emily and Angela. But uh, Harper tells Jody that there's no worse bully than the one you create in your head, um, which ties directly to that imposter syndrome. So obviously, Tall Girl 2, you know, we just talked about this a little bit, but, you know, focuses heavily on that self-doubt and the anxiety and you know, kind of trying to conquer those fears. What message do you either or both of you want to, you know, want the audience to take away from the movie? Do you want? I'll go. You, um, go you know, I my daughter is thirteen. She'll be fourteen this year, and um, I'm so excited for her to see the movie. I've seen it, but she hasn't. She can't wait. She loved the first movie. Her friends loved the first movie. This is this is the audience, you know, and, um, she is my whole heart. Do you know what I mean? As a mom, she's my whole entire heart. And I think about the message of this movie of just saying that, like, no one's going to tear you down the way you can tear yourself down and learning to love yourself. It sounds like a simple thing, but it's really not, you know, and, to love yourself is such a gift and to celebrate that and to also normalize that getting anxious, getting scared is absolutely just part of this journey of life and everyone has it. And, and just, I, I think all of those messages are just so important. Yeah. And for me as a filmmaker, I just want to make sure, you know, kids whether you're a kid whether you're 14 or 40 to just watch this movie and know that you're not alone in dealing with issues of anxiety and imposter syndrome I think if you know that other people are also experiencing it it may make your journey yeah less lonely um, and just know that it's okay to have these feelings um, and if you need a reminder ever that hey you are good enough and you can do this hopefully they'll watch the movie and you know, give themselves a, a warm hug. <laughs> Our next question will be from Amy Fulter from As the Bunny Hops. 
Hello, I'm Emily. I have heard that when you do anything that has a show within a show element, that it can almost be like creating a second movie. And mm. I was wondering what it was like for you to bring Bye Bye Birdie to life in the film. Yes, the Bye Bye Birdie element was honestly my favorite thing to direct in the whole film. I had such anxiety going in. I was like, I do not know how to put together a musical. So we like punted to the, like, the last week of production. But once we got there, we were so ready because we've been practicing for weeks. And the thing I want to do with Bye Bye is like we really wanted to kind of modernize it a little bit. It's still sort of like set in that mid-century 60s. But like with all the songs and everything, it just had a kind of like a dated feel. So it was a real pleasure to kind of like figure out the sound and reinventing Bye Bye Birdie for today's audience. Um, that I think was like the biggest creative challenge, but also the most fun. And I really hope that if people are not aware of Bye Bye Birdie, they'll watch the film and really seek out the original. Um, yeah, that would be really cool to kind of give Bye Bye Birdie a new resurgence in pop culture. Okay, so um, I have a question here from Shannon Gurney from Redhead Mom. Um, she would like to know for each of you, um, what was your favorite scene in Tall Girl 2? Well, I mean, uh, there's, there's two for me because I loved the scene as a mom where Helene and Richie pull over on the side of the road and they help their daughter through this scary moment. And they realize as parents that, Maybe they've been putting too much pressure on her. And it's this great family moment. And we all started crying. I mean, Emily, when we filmed it, remember, I, I, I didn't know I was going to start crying, but Ava did such a great performance. She just poured her heart out. And being a mom myself, like I, I, I just disintegrated into tears. And um, we did a few takes of that. And she brought it every time. And I was so proud of her, you know, and um, so that scene is very special to me. But then, you know, I my my God, I love the family dinners. I mean, both movies had the family dinners. I love a family dinner. I love a family dynamic. I love that Steve Zahn and I got to play. I love that Richie and Helene completely gross out their daughters. <laughs> I just I, I love scenes like that as a comedian, you know. Um, my favorite scene is the packing scene between Harper and Jody, and that's another really heartfelt scene, and it's so intimate, just the two of them on the bed and Harper kind of admitting that she also suffers from that voice, and my God, these two actresses, I remember it was our last scene that we shot on the first day of, on the first week of production, and they moved me to tears behind the monitor. It was the last scene that we shot and like they were just on there was no warm up it was like we call action and the tears just like came pouring out both girls um and i remember going home like just with such a high because i felt like we ended the first week of production with like the most emotional and heartfelt scene of the movie in the bag and I cried watching dailies. I cry watch like like that scene continues to move me, and that's because both girls poured so much of themselves um, into that scene. And on the other end of the spectrum, my other favorite scene is the Bye Bye Birdie performance because I think you know like you could see the um, the hard work that the cast and crew went into creating that very like big set piece. So it goes from the you know the big performance to the very intimate quiet two-hander those are the my two favorite scenes in the movie okay we have about three minutes left so tessa why don't you round us off with the last question please yeah well i asked angela so emily why don't you let us know if you have any advice uh, for people that are out there dealing with uh that inner voice and how they can get past it. Yeah, um, and this is coming from Harper. It's like, if you don't learn to control that voice in your head, it's gonna end up controlling you. And it's so true because it, you're the one who's manifesting this noise in your head. Just yeah. like throughout this whole process, I was so scared, come, you know, directing my first big studio film. I thought everyone was gonna know, I didn't know what I was doing and make fun of me. Like no one did that. Like no cast, no crew, no producer ever made me feel like I wasn't qualified 
I was the only one who was telling myself that. And sometimes you just have to find that voice within yourself to, to lift yourself up rather than tearing yourself down.